All right, so this is my charbroil. Um, I really, really enjoy this little smoker. Super tiny, really cheap, works pretty good. I did the basic modifications of what people recommend, which with the red silicone around all the edges. So that way um, you don't get any smoke leakage. So I got it there. I've got it in between all the things. Before I even built this thing, I put the red silicone in all the different spots. Come over here, got it in every little spot that you can possibly think of. Um, it does a pretty good job. One thing you'll notice that there's a bunch of rust right here. And this shouldn't happen if you use it properly. I was looking at reviews where people were saying that this rusts really easily because the paint peels. And literally the only reason that that happened is because um, I was testing it and I built a fire way more than I would possibly ever need while smoking. And um, it finally then started peeling the paint. And I actually bought some more paint that I'm going to sand this off and use some black engine paint to um, make it all nice and pretty again. But this was literally me just testing whether it would uh, peel or not. And it totally did after building an insanely huge fire. Um, but in normal charcoal smoking, this will literally never happen. Um, and also you'll notice here, it happened here as well. And that's only because I built such a huge fire. Um, prior to doing this, I, I'd used it three or four times and this never happened. I built that huge fire to see what people were talking about and it finally happened. So as tiny cheap smokers go, this thing works really well. It's not super amazing when it comes to being really thick. Um, the metal isn't very thick gauge. Uh, you may have issues in the winter time or in cold seasons um, when it comes to holding the heat. So it's more of just a summer um, type deal and you can't cook a ton. So if it's just for you and your family, you're not doing a huge barbecue cookout for a family reunion, this thing's perfect. Okay, so this isn't necessarily um, what it is that you need for this grill, but these are things that I would use specifically for any smoker. So I would recommend getting a thing of silicone gloves, which you can find on Amazon. Any type of bear claw puller if you're doing pulled pork, I would highly recommend getting one of these... Uh, Charcoal chimney starter things makes it super easy to start all your charcoal, your seasonings obviously, your delicious meat that you're going to use, and then um, your wood chips. Today I'm doing a mesquite uh, mix. Um, one thing that I do for sure, and this is just me and what it is that I like to do, is I use the big wood chips, like the big old chunky ones like this, okay? And then I will soak these little ones. They're just these tiny little, here you, know, you can see, just little tiny shavings. And what I do is since the smoker is so tiny and sort of fickle, like it's very hard to just keep a very consistent temperature, I'll put these on. And what these do, I will not soak these. And these will sometimes create a big fire, so it spikes the temperature. Um, and I will soak these. I don't personally like soaking my chips. I know a lot of people do, but I don't. The only reason I soak these is to help regulate when these catch on fire. Um, to me, if you're soaking your chips, it just really lowers the temperature and it has to cook the steam out of your wood before you can actually get it to start smoking again. So at first, all you're seeing is steam and not smoke. So, big wood chips. Sometimes I'll create a big fire, which will spike it up to like three, 400 degrees. When that happens, just throw some of these wet wood chips on top. It totally snuffs out the fire, and then you get a really, really good smoke going because these are smoking while these are steaming and dampening the fire a lot. So that's how I regulate the temperature. If it's really low, let's say I come out and it's only 100 degrees, I will put one of these on and actually encourage a fire to start going to get it up to 225 again. Let's say it spikes past that, and then I'll regulate it with these soaked wood chips. And I only soak them for, you know, 10 minutes. Some people are like, smoke them for, you know, half hour, however long people like to soak them for. I just do it actually while I'm going. And let's say I run out, I'll just throw some more in a, in a water bowl, and then I'll just keep using them. And literally, it's, it's I don't use them to smoke, it's just to regulate the temperature. 
So those are the things that I use. This is the foil that I use. It's handy foil that I just get from the grocery store. It is in a too large thing, so it comes with two. And it has it is 13 and a half by 9 and 5 eighths by 2 and 3 fourths inch deep or tall. So it's a good tall length. Um, this is what I use in order to completely um, cover all the gaps. So I'll show you what it is that I'm talking about once I've got it in. The water pan, this is what it is that I do. So here's the water pan and you'll notice it goes from all the way to the edge, all the way to the edge and it comes up. So here's where the fire comes out. Let's see if I can get... So right here is where the fire comes out. I push my water pan all the way to the edge and I actually curl up the edges here so that way I can butt it right up against so now what that does is it forces the fire when it comes to the firebox to go underneath this water pan and then it comes up and it heats up this water and it keeps it in a nice consistent temperature so when you open this up so let's say it's at a 225 or whatever on your um, thermostat you open this up and this water is nice and hot and boiling and it's super toasty and then when you shut it the water is still the same temperature so you don't lose so much out of that so that's what I use as a water pan it gets all the drippings and everything as well and um, it keeps your meat nice and tender what I found without this is the water just immediately comes up through here and it just chars everything and it gets everything way too hot so this keeps it a nice consistent cooler temperature of what it is that I like for when I'm smoking uh, pulled pork specifically. Something else I wanted to mention is I put these bottom grates on first. So you got the bottom grate, which is basically, it's really hard to see. There you go. It's basically the same level as the um, fire intake. So the hole is basically the exact same level. So that's perfect for this fire or the, the water pan. And I put it right on top of the bottom grate. And then I put my grilling grate right on top of that. So it's like literally the exact perfect height. And I just find this at the grocery store. Okay, something else I wanted to mention. You will see that um, it is super duper cold right now. And if I put my hand above here, it's not really getting a good draw. I just barely put my coals in. They're super nice and hot, nice and ashy. Um, but I'm not getting the draw that I want because I've got my water pan in and sometimes the water pan You'll see right here that it's it's butting up right next to it and in order to get a draw going at first sometimes you need to um, You can grab anything that you have a fork a knife or anything and you can just wedge this out to create a little gap like a half inch so that way the the heat will actually go above this and then go up the chimney so that way it can create a good draw. Once you get that good draw going up this chimney pipe, then I will smash the um, this water pan uh, tin against the wall again and make it go underneath. But as of right now, I'm gonna create a little gap right there to get the draw going. Alrighty, so I got everything up and running. I got my smoke coming out of the chimney and everything. And I just wanted to show you what 14 pounds of pulled pork looks like inside of this so that's how much it basically takes up the entire uh, cooking chamber but it works pretty good okay so something I wanted to mention that I do this doesn't tend to stay open like you open it and then it just slides back down so what I do is I have a metal you'll see the metal shovel type thing I just put it in my bucket that I use for garbage and I will push it up against this thing so depending on how high I want it then it actually keeps it open and this is metal so it really doesn't matter and let's say I want it to shut then I just move it open it up and then just it's literally just wedged right there okay so something I wanted to mention is I, I may seem like common sense but when I'm about to go put the coals in I make sure that this is all the way shut so that way when I put it in no coals come out
All right, so one other thing I will do is I will then drag all the coals away from the exit or the air intake so that way none of them will fall out and go out the outside. So something that I try and do my best to do is if you notice that there are, that this bottom part is getting clogged, I will go in and I will like knock stuff around, get it all open again because if this gets clogged at the bottom right here, I mean what I just showed you, then it really really restricts airflow. One thing that I wanted to mention that I tried for the very first time because it's so cold is I actually put the grilling plate, um, normally there's a plate underneath right here and that's the coal plate. I actually put the grilling plate above so I have two tiers. So I have the bottom, I'm going to bring it down here. So I have a plate right here inside that has coals and then a top plate where I would normally put burgers up there. So I'll come around and show you. This is the bottom plate right there with coals. And then if you see up top, I have a plate above it and it's actually maintaining heat at this point. If I close this, it'll actually start smoking again instead of just being on fire. But um, this is totally helping. It's extremely windy today. It's super cold. So you know I got the, the smoke going again. The fire dampens down. If this was just straight fire, then there wouldn't be any smoke coming right now. Um, but when I open this up, fire happens again. So I just thought I'd mention this because this is the first time that I've tried it. And that's where it goes into the, the grill. And then it comes into the grill. And I've got the pan right there like I showed earlier. And I've got my meats going. So it is super late. I'm still doing my smoke. Got a bunch of smoke coming out. And I just wanted to show you. I've already done my first flip. And um, here it is what it looks like. A nice, juicy, freaking amazing pulled pork in the making right here. I'm still using the two-tiered thing because it's about in the 30s now. So I have the top tier doing the smoke. And then, as you see, I've got the bottom and the top tier. There's the top, there's the bottom, and it's actually working really well. Alright, so... Overall, I really like the smoker. It's it's a decent beginner smoker. It's not a professional one. It's a side along smoker with the firebox on the side. I really like it. I would recommend it to anybody wanting to get into smoking and anyone that's just curious whether they enjoy it or not. That's why I bought it and I discovered that I absolutely love smoking. And now I am going to actually get a probably a better model and something more thick gauged metal and I will continue doing my smoking endeavors. Thank you guys very very much for watching. I hope you guys learned something. Please like, comment, and subscribe.